my confession is that I like honestly don't read that much. Oh. I know, I know. Where do you get your information? <laughs> my friends are the books that I read. Oh. You're like, no, they can do the reading for me, and then no, I'll just get really. it through them. No, You're really. Like, this is the Sparks <laughs> notes of the book. <laughs> exactly. First question, your music has been described as a blend of pop, indie, R&B, hyper pop, thus creating a really unique sound. So how do you approach incorporating all those diverse influences into your music and how do you feel it reflects your Chinese Colombian heritage? Yeah, so growing up <laughs> Chinese and Colombian, um, both cultures are super different and super strong. So I've just grown up embracing like two very different things that are equally as me and as authentic to me. Um, so I kind of just carry that spirit and energy into making music where like I like a lot of different genres and I feel connected to a lot of different genres and inspired by a lot of different genres. I just feel like it's natural to embrace all of them and create something that is just uniquely mine and me and feels real and honest. So growing up doing that um, within my family and within like growing up in New York and embracing everything that comes my way, um, I've just carried that over into songwriting too. So it just, it, it feels right for me to like embrace everything that feels like it's mine. Are there any like music icons from either Colombia or China that you grew up listening to and you really look up to? Honestly, not like specifically Chinese and Colombian. It was just like a wide range of music that came from both sides and from just me growing up in New York and from friends and family. So it's more just like the spirit of embracing everything. But I do sing this Spanish cover at a lot of my shows. Um, it's called Soledad y el Mar, mm -hmm. and it's by Natalia La Forcade. Um, and that song is super special to me. Just anytime I sing any song in Spanish, um, I just feel really connected to like my family and stuff. I have yet to sing in Chinese, but I definitely want to. Really? Um, oh even God. though it is That's harder, so harder to learn, yeah. much harder language to learn, um, and I do speak some Spanish, so, but it's definitely a goal of mine, so I, I hope to do that soon. So like, what does it mean for you performing at HITC then? Because like, I feel like it's really cool that you're from New York too, because yeah. this is just home for you. Oh, but it's you're doing home. something completely different. So. Well, yeah, I, I'm not only from New York, I'm from Forest Hills, like literally a few blocks from the stadium. Yeah. So it's like the most full circle thing ever to be able to stand on that stage. It's really just so crazy. So it just feels surreal. And I'm just honored to be at a festival that's like full of energy and light and celebrating Asian American artists. It's just, it's so magical. So. Yeah, I just feel really happy. I had so much fun. Are your family like friends here too? Yeah, like my whole family is here. Oh my my aunt, my cousin, my grandma, my neighbors, my high school friends, my college friends, my music friends, everyone's here and it just feels like the stadium is just so full of love and I'm really happy. Well, I mean, you're like, you better come. It's not that hard for you to make it here. <laughs> I know, like, this is literally, like, my childhood dream to play on this stage. Did you always know that you were going to be a musician? I always dreamed of it. I just didn't know that it was possible. I didn't know how to, like, enter the music industry, but it was always my biggest dream. So then once I went to college for music and started learning about how to actually get your foot in this business and in this world, I was, like, full sending it, and I, like fully committed to doing it and I feel so lucky that I am able to do that now. Yeah. Yeah. Was there any you went to Clive Davis? Yeah. Right? When you were there learning, was there any like lesson that stuck out to you? Like maybe during a lecture? Was there anything yeah. that served maybe as like a turning point for you? No, really. Um one of the first lectures that we had in freshman year, we had a guest speaker who had this like big presentation and all it was just big letters and it just said I don't remember exactly what it said but it said something along the lines of just like do what you want mm. and like that just like I really internalized that for some reason like really just doing exactly what you want making the music that you like writing about things that you want to write about not that you think you are supposed to because when I was learning how to write songs 
I was kind of just like, okay, I think you're supposed to do this. Like, and this is supposed to have like a kick drum here, like all these different things. But as I like listen to myself more and more and more and just like listen to my intuition and like pressed the buttons that like I wanted to press and like sang the melodies that I wanted to sing and write about the things I wanted to write about that's when I felt the most connected to my music like when I started writing about like existentialism and like life and death and being like a human and all those like rabbit hole thoughts that's when I was like oh my god this is like songwriting to me and now I just like lead with that I will always just be like do what you want I will always that will always be my advice to, to anyone like don't do what you think you're supposed to do what you like truly truly want to do I feel like you're one of the only people at least recently that's written such a bop about something <laughs> so existential yeah. and like I feel like well this is something that I complain about to a lot of my friends it's that there's way too many like love songs <laughs> yeah. and then finally you came out with this banger where it's like oh, oh my gosh you. should I like what does life mean yeah no like, exactly like I when I was first writing songs, I was like, okay, you're supposed to write a love song. Like, you're just, that's just what yeah. you're supposed to write about. And then, like, one time I was just, like, in this, like, creative rut, and I was just like, what do I write about? And, like, I had recently just been talking to my best friend about this idea of how, like, everyone's advice contradicts itself and how, like, nobody really knows what they're saying. Because we have different, like, sayings that, like, are these, like, big general sayings that, like, kind of contradict each other. Like, for example, like, um trust your gut but then like like trust your you gut and trust your or trust your intuition but then it's like but like also don't t judge a book by its cover and like give things a chance like just everything like it just feels like then I, I can start to get really existential and like ramble about this but like everything starts to feel a little like whoa like do what are we like what are we actually supposed to do? yeah what are we like we don't actually know anything that we're supposed to do and so that's when i wrote like one of my first songs called breakfast song which is like just this existential song like <laughs> which the little why we brought the this cereal <laughs> yeah it's like an existential song about how nobody knows what they're doing and we're all just pretending and it's kind of freeing in a way um, but then when I wrote that I was like wait you can write about like I can write about this like this isn't a love song but it's like so inspiring to me and it's the best I've ever felt about a song I've written and I can write about this so then ever since then I've just really listened to myself and what I want to say and writing more about that type of stuff and that's how like the rest of the my, my EP really came to be. Do people come up to you after the show if they can and they're like, oh, you put like my own existentialism into words? Like what's <laughs> yeah. the typical feedback? No, yeah, there's like a lot of people who, I, I was so shocked because I was actually not sure if that song would be like relatable. It would resonate with yeah, people? because I'm yeah. like, it's so crazy to just be like, we're all gonna die and we're all eating each other like that's such a weird thing to like say um but people have like ever since like i started posting it on social media i've gotten just so many messages about like this is like exactly how i feel and like or or, or crazy things like this has like cured my fear of death or like has gotten me through a really hard time or and it's just so beautiful to see like something so weird actually be like the most relatable thing ever because life and death is just like what being a human is and we're all humans so it actually it turned out to be like the most relatable thing um well i think your honesty and like candidness is yeah. very refreshing though. oh thank you yeah. so i'm just curious though what's your like life philosophy or like honestly like i don't know like it changes okay, okay. all the time that's like, so funny <laughs> i know i'm a, I, sometimes i'm like super like like in my head and, and spiritual and I like, feel a lot of like all these energy things and then sometimes I'm like really into like the like science side of like life and death and I, it just like really goes up and down which is fun because are you a more... morbid person no I'm oh, like okay. not which is why like <laughs> I like I get really scared about that kind of stuff like oh. I don't like horror movies I don't like I don't like thinking about it which is like honestly why I wrote it because it really helped me with like my fear of it yeah um because I like do stay up late like thinking about them when these things when like I don't want to and I get scared ever since I was little I would like ask my parents like what's gonna happen after this what's like I would get so scared oh my God. so so writing it was like so freeing to be like wait you can look at it this way though like it can be beautiful and we could actually our, our human bodies can be eternal in some way and 
and yeah, it really helped me. So my philosophy on life changes all the time, which is why I like writing about this stuff so much because it's always changing, it's always growing. But that's really fascinating the way you phrase it though, like trying to be eternal, because I think that's what your music does too. You're internalizing your thought process, eternalizing yeah. it, not internalizing. Yeah, eternal. And like other people, they're like becoming influenced by your yeah. words. So it's like the impact goes like far beyond, which is really <laughs> yeah. cool. Well, thank you. What's your favorite lyric that you've written if you could choose? Oh my gosh, lyric. <laughs> Honestly, just like the whole chorus of we're all eating each other, like the the sequence of events in that, like that feels really special to me and I feel really proud of that chorus and that whole song. But also I have a song called Wet Nose, which is about my dog, but it's also about a little bit of existentialism and like my brain feeling quiet and the first verse of that song. I feel also really proud of lyrically. Are there any poets that inspire you? Yeah, honestly, not not even really poets. I, my inspiration comes from so many different places. Like, on my on my TikTok, I get like a lot of like poetry slides, and like I read through them, and they're really inspiring. Or even just other lyricists, other songwriters, or just like things that I literally see on the streets of New York. Mm -hmm. Like, I saw that in another article. <laughs> you talked yeah. about that. Yeah. You know, yeah, just like seeing how how humans interact and how they behave and how they emote. It's just very interesting to me. Um, I feel like you would really like an anthropology class. I know, I think I would too. My dad's a psychologist, um, so we've always kind of like had conversations about like the human brain and human behavior and life and death since I was little. So yeah, it's a big part of me. Mm -hmm. Wait, do you have any book recommendations for people? Because I feel like I'm tapping into like, <laughs> like your more nerdy side, I guess. Like okay. it's heavily intellectual. This no, it's definitely intellectual. But my like confession is that I like honestly don't read that much. Oh. I know, I know. Where do you get your information? I know, like I don't know. Oh my god! Like from my brain, from like people. I'm just like a really social person, like. I don't do that many activities just like on my own like reading a book but I should um, <laughs> but honestly yeah no, my ideas for you. my ideas really do come from like human interaction and like seeing people and and talking to my, my friends are so smart so they're like my friends are the books that I read oh. yeah you're like no they can do the reading for me and then no, I'm just gonna really. read them no You're really. like the, this is the sparks notes of the book <laughs> exactly like us having like existential conversations and like just like debates about life and science and and all this stuff like they are really knowledgeable so they like I don't know, we just have really great conversation. Is there a place that you like people watch in New York? Honestly, like mostly the subway. Oh, okay. Like when I'm sitting there Are on the train. Are you following subway creatures? Oh, of course. Okay, yeah. Of course. <laughs> I love the subway creatures. If you don't call them, you don't live here. <laughs> no, literally. Um, when I'm on the subway, I see the most characters ever. So the most like diverse interactions between like people and yeah. It's honestly the subway. Are you working on another project right now? Yeah, I'm working on is my... Is there any subway creature <laughs> that inspired anything on there recently? Subway stuff? Um, let me think. <laughs> well, the subway stuff really inspired, like, we're all eating each other and, like, playpen. Um, but this next project is more, like, introspective and, like, internal, like, self-reflective. Self so a lot of the inspiration just came from, like, me and my childhood and, and my parents and my family and... Yeah. So... Maybe not so much Subway this this EP, but I am really excited about it because it's like more personal and and it just feels like the right like next body of work. So I'm really excited about. Yeah, like you're growing and expanding. Yeah, the, the variety of things that you're writing about. So exactly. It makes sense. Yeah, I feel like it's like really getting or allowing people to get to know me on mm. this next project. Do you think people get to know you when you're performing up there too? Oh yeah, definitely. Do you prefer like being in the studio or singing like live? Honestly, singing live, it's so fun. Just to like bounce back off humans. Like I was saying, like I'm really social and I like to be around people. So to be around like a thousand people is just like so fun. And the fans want to know what's on the next <laughs> project. What, are you, what would you say? I'd say that there's this song that I've played live a few times called Girl Talk that is going to be on this project, which is basically just about being a girl and how it's like simultaneously really hard but also so powerful. And then there's just a bunch that like are really getting to know me and my 
childhood and my brain and and yeah so I'm just really excited being like so vulnerable with your lyrics and knowingly like you're you're being very deliberate about the fact that your next album is going to be for them to get to know you yeah how do you keep like your private life private and still have things that are meant for you without oversharing is that a concern that you even have or are you ready to like give mm. it all to your audience honestly not really concerned about that mm. like I have never really been like secretive I, I really like to like talk and like mm. share things about myself and like be an open book so honestly I the more I can share like the better um, but I do think that there are definitely still like lyrical things that are left up to like the imagination mm. like and that's just like kind of the way that I like to write anyway like kind of showing and not and not telling as much so it leaves kind of some stuff up to interpretation and it allows people to like make it their own as well yeah. so even though it's like way more personal and um, you get to know me a lot more there's still like pockets of well, you said they can make it like their yeah, own story. Yeah, exactly. Like, s there's still space to like make it your own or have your own in interpretations of it um, without like giving everything away. Mm. Well, it's just how like unified humanity is. We just don't know it because even though the stories are complex, you're like telling one that's overarching and like hits everybody. Because like, yeah, like, still you again, can fill in the gaps. Hit, yourself. So <laughs> I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, you can fill in the gaps like with your own experiences.